Hi friends, today I am going to read you chapter 7 and in our previous video of Fantastic Mr. Fox, we saw that the farmers were very cruel to everyone and Mr. Fox used to steal the farmer's food. So then the farmers planned to shoot him and when they shot him, they got his tail and then they, they started to dig with their shovels after that when they were tired with digging the shovels they brought their mecha mechanical shovels then they dug it dug and dug, dug the hole and then and mr fox luckily dug and ran away so now let's start chapter 7 we'll never let him go at 6 o'clock in the evening, Dean switched off the motor of his tractor and climbed down from the driver's seat. Bunch did the same. Both men had enough. They were tired and stiff from driving the tractors all day. They were also hungry. Slowly, they walked over to, over to the small fox's hole in the bottom of the huge crater. Bean's face was purple with rage. Bunch was cursing the fox with dirty words that cannot be printed. Bogus came waddling up. Dang and blast that filthy stinking fox, he said. What the heck do we do now? I tell you you I tell you what we don't do, Bean said. We don't let him go. We'll never let him go, Bunce declared. Never, 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 cried Bogus. Did you hear that, Mr. Fox? yelled Bean, bending low and shouting down the hole. It's not over yet, Mr. Fox. We are not going home till we have strung you up, up dead as a dingbat. Whereupon the three men all shook hands and over another and swore a sol solemn or that they would not go back to their farms until the fox was caught. What's the next move? Bunce asked. Asked Bunce, the pot-bellied dog. We are sending you down the hole to fetch him up, said B. Now you go, you miserable, miserable midget. Not me, screamed Bunce, running away. We made a sickly smile. When he smiled, you saw his skeleton gums. You saw more gums than teeth. Then there's only one thing to do, he said. We starve him out. We camp here day and night watch in, watching the hole. He'll come out in the end. He'll have to, he'll have to. So Bogus and Buns and Bean send messages down to the farms asking for 10 sleeping bags and supper. That he, now it's chapter 8. The foxes begin to starve. That evening three tents were put up in the crater on the hill. One for Bogus, one for Buns and one for Bean. The tents surrounded Mr. Fox's hole and they and the three farmers sat outside sat outside their tents eating their supper. Bogus and had three boiled chickens smothered with dumplings. Bunch had um, six donuts filled with disgusting goose liver paste and Bean had two gallons of syrup. All three of them kept their guns beside them. Bogus picked up a stream, steaming kitchen chicken and held it close to Miss Fox to the fox's hole. Can you smell this, Mr. Fox? He shouted. Lovely tender chicken. Why don't you come up and get it? The rich scent of chicken walked down the tunnel to where the foxes were crouching. Oh dad, said one of the small foxes. Couldn't we just sneak up and snatch out of his hand? 
Don't you dare, said Miss, Mrs. Fox. That's just they want to, you to do. But we are so hungry, they cried. How long will, will it be till we get something to eat? Their mother didn't answer them, nor their father. There was no answer to give. As darkness fell, buns and beans switched on the powerful headlamps, headlamps of the two tractors and shown them to the hole. Now, said Bean, we'll take it, we'll take it in turn to keep watch. One watches while two sleep. And so on all through the night. Bogus said, what if the small fox, the, what if the fox digs a hole right through the hill and comes out on another side? You didn't think of that one, did you? Of course I did, said Bean, pretending he had. Go on then, tell us the answer, said Bogus. Bean picked something small and black out of his ear and flicked it away. How many men have you got working on your farm? He asked. Thirty-five, Bogus said. I've got thirty-six, Man said. I've got thirty-seven, said Bean. That makes one hundred and eight men altogether. We must order them to surround the hill. Each man will have a gun and a flashing light. There will no, there will be no escape then for Mr. Fox. So the order went down to the farms. That and that night, one hundred and eight men formed a tight ring around the bottom of the hill. They were armed with sticks and gum, guns and hatches, hatches with pistols and all sorts of horrible weapons. This made it quite impossible for, for, for a fox to or in need for any other animal to escape from the hill. The next day, the watching and waiting went on. Bogies and buns and beans sat upon small stools staring, staring at the fox's hole. They didn't talk much. They just sat there with their guns on their laps. Every so often, Mr. Fox would creep a little closer towards the mouth of the tunnel and take a sniff. Then they would creep back again and say they're still here. Are you quite sure? Mrs. Fox would ask. Positive, said Mr. Fox. I can smell that man being a mile away. He stinks. Chapter 9 Mr. Fox has a plan. For three days, the three for three days and three nights, this waiting game went on. How long can a fox go without food or water? Bo Bogus asked on the third day. Not much longer now, Bean told him. He'll make a run for it soon. He'll have to. Bean was right. Down in the tunnel, the foxes were slowly but sure. Surely starving to death. If only we could have just a tiny sip of water in the small foxes. Oh, Dad, can't you do something? Couldn't we make a dash for it? Dad, we had have a little bit of a chance, wouldn't we? No chance at all, snapped Mrs. Fox. I refuse to let you go up there and face those guns I I did I had sno sooner you stay down here and die in peace. Mm. Mr Fox had not spoken for a long time. He had been sitting quite still, his eyes closed, not even hearing what the others were saying. Mrs Fox knew that he was trying desperately to think of, of a way out. And now as she looked at him, she saw him stir himself and stir him stir him himself and get slow to his feet. 
He looked back at his wife. There, there was a little spark of excitement dancing in his eyes. What is it, darling? Mr. F said Mrs. Fox quickly. It, I have just, I have just had a bit of an idea. Mr. Fox said carefully. What? They cried. Oh, Dan, what is it? Come on, said, said Mrs. Fox. Tell us quickly. Well, said Mr. Fox. Then he stopped and sighed. Stop, stopped and sighed and sadly shook his head. He sat down again. It's not good, he said. It won't work after all. Why not, Dan? Because it means more digging and there aren't any of us strong enough for that after three days and three and nights without food. Yes, we are, Dan, cried the small foxes, jumping jumping up and running to their father. We can do it. You see if we can't. So can you. Mr. Fox looked at the four small, four small foxes and he smiled. What? Fine. What fine? He children, I have. I have. He thought they are starving to death and they haven't had a drink for three days. Days, but they are still un undefeated. I must not let them know down. I. I suppose we could give a try, give it a try. He said, let's go, Dad. Tell us what you want us to do. Slowly, Mrs. Fox got to her feet. She was suffering more than any of them from the lack of food and water. She was, she was very weak. I'm so sorry, she said, but I don't think I'm going to be much help. You stay right where you are, my darling, said Mr. Fox. We can handle this by ourselves. So now we are finished with our three chapters of Fantastic Mr. Fox. And thank you. Bye. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe on my channel. Twitch for Kids by Kids. Bye.